So this is just an expression, a polynomial, right? And we just set the value equal to one, we calculate it. But let's go ahead and define something called a function. You know, in everyday language, what is a function, right? What, what is a function? Uh, well, a function is something that describes how something works, right? Like my pencil sharpener has a function. The function is I stick a pencil in and it sharpens the pencil, right? My car has a function. I, the function of my car is to propel me and get me around town. Everything has a function. It does a job. When something has a function, it does a job. So functions in algebra do a job. They calculate things. And let me give you an example of that. What if I have a function uh, t of x and you'll, I'll explain what all this means in a minute, is equal to 5x minus 3. Notice I use the same exact thing, 5x minus 3. I use the same thing that I used up there because I'm trying to basically tell you it's the same thing that we've been doing all along. It's just written down a little bit differently. This represents, on the left-hand side, a function. When you see a variable, parentheses, and then another variable, you might think this is just t times x because parentheses mean multiplication in algebra, and they do. But this is a little bit different. This is not really saying multiplication of t times x. This is saying that t, whatever it is, is a function of x, right? Let me ask you a question. Do you think, in this room that I'm standing, that the temperature of every, of every point in this room is the same, right? If I take a, a digital thermometer that's extremely accurate, and I hold the thermometer here, it might read, you know, I don't know, 75 degrees, right, Fahrenheit or whatever, 28 degrees Celsius or something, okay? And then I might move it over here, and it's gonna read a slightly different temperature. It's gonna be close, because we're in the same room, but it's gonna be different, okay? So it might read 73 degrees over here. If I move it up, it might read slightly different temperature. And if I move it over this way, it's gonna read a slightly different temperature. So at wherever I move my temperature probe, I'm going to read a different temperature. So the temperature reading is a function of position. It's a function of wherever I put the, the, the probe. When I measure the temperature here, it's going to be different than when I measure it over here. It's going to be different when I measure it over here. So it's a function of position. In algebra and in physics and other classes, we usually use x to talk about the position. So basically you would say the temperature is a function of x. You know, x might be zero right here, and, right? and then one centimeter over here might be x is equal to one. One more centimeter, x is equal to two, x is equal to three, x is equal to four, x is equal to five. So you kind of have like a number line right in front of you here, where x is equal to zero is over here, one, two, three, four, five. And then if you go the other way, x is equal to negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. So you have kind of like a grid right in front of you, uh, values of x. And as you move the probe this way, it's bigger x. When you move the probe that way, it gets to zero and then it goes to negative x, right? And so Wherever I put my probe, I'm getting different temperature readings. It's a function of x, a function of position. And that's what I've written down here without telling you. This t is representing, the, let's just say, the temperature in this room along a line, right? Not everywhere, just along some line. And it's a function of x. It's a function of wherever I put the probe. So if I measure the temperature here, and I measure the temperature over here, and then over here, and then over here, it's all going to be the same. Now I'm just saying for the sake of argument that this temperature as a function of x is equal to this expression. So what I can do is this is telling me what it's a function of. This variable is always going, whatever it is, is always going to pop up over here because I'm saying it's a function of x. So it has to be present over here in the math. So if I put in x is equal to zero here, what am I going to get? Five times zero, zero, minus three is negative three. So Obviously, this does not really represent the temperature in this room, but if it did, then what it's saying is that x is equal to zero, the temperature is negative three degrees. That's what it's saying. If I put x is equal to one in here, five times one is five, minus three is two. That means that at x is equal to one, when I go to one centimeter to the right, the uh, temperature is gonna be two degrees. And so I can plug in different values of x and put them in here and calculate different values of temperature because that's what I've actually defined this function to represent. So in the biggest possible picture, al functions in algebra are very, very practical because they're, that's what you really use algebra for. All the stuff we've done so far, it's kind of been just sort of like just to teach you how to use algebra. But really, functions are really when you start rolling up your sleeves and using algebra. Here we're talking about temperature as a function of position in the room. But I might have a function that's, you know, that's, you know, uh, pressure. 
uh, as a function of altitude, right? When I go up towards space, the pressure is, gets lower, lower, lower as I go, and then eventually I get where there's no air and there's no pressure at all. Well, I can make a function so that I can plug in values of my altitude, and then I will calculate the pressure. That is a function. It's a function of altitude. Right? I could have a function of velocity, some calculating something as a function of velocity. I could have a function of anything I can make up that is represented in the real world. I can calculate things that are basically dependent on other things. They're a function of other things. So I did a lot of talking, but I finally want to do some, some actual math to kind of show you how to nail it down. If you want to calculate this temperature, getting back to our temperature example, as a function of, of position, then if I want to calculate it at x is equal to 2, then I just put a parenthesis in here. This is not t times 2. This means the temperature is a function of position at x is equal to 2, right? That's the same thing as saying that x is equal to 2. It's the same thing as saying x is equal to 2 in here. Just, you just write the 2. I'm just kind of showing you here. Then what you do is 5 times 2 minus 3, 10 minus 3, right? And so what you're going to get is 7 over here. So if this were really a function of temperature, then at x is equal to 2, wherever I've defined that to be, the temperature is 7 degrees. All right? What if you had a position of negative 1? That's not too magical. It just means if this is my zero point that I've defined, then negative 1 is this way instead of this way, uh, going positive. So it's just going the other, other direction. So I'll say x is equal to negative 1, OK? 5 times negative 1 minus 3. This is negative 5 minus 3. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8, right? So it's interesting. I'm finding out right here. Let me go ahead and circle this, just so you can kind of keep track of it easily on the board. Basically, what we're saying is, is that x is equal to positive 2. The temperature is a positive number, positive 7. And when I go the other way, the temperature at, at, you know, this way, a little bit farther left, at negative 1, and x is equal to negative 1, it happens to be a negative number. So you can see, no matter what value I put in for x, I'm always going to calculate some temperature. And, you know, this, we're just pretending, actually represents the temperature in the room. In real life, if you were doing an experiment, you'd have to measure everything, and you calculate a function that describes reality. This, obviously, doesn't describe reality. It's not seven degrees here and negative eight degrees over there, but it's illustrating the point for you. The main thing for you to understand is these represent calculations. You put in a value of x, you get a value back. That is the general idea of a function. And you don't even have to put numbers in here. You can put anything you want here. I can say t, I can put a variable in there. I'll call it w. It doesn't matter. If, you're, if your teacher says, hey, evaluate this function t at, at w, then you're just going to take whatever's in here and stick it into here. 5 times w minus 3. In other words, 5w minus 3. Whatever goes in here, you just dutifully stick it into your function in the proper spot, into the variable spot. It's exactly the same as what we did up here when I just told you, here's an expression. Take your value of x that I've defined and stick it in there. It's the same thing. It's just that you represent it on the left-hand side by putting whatever you're plugging in into your function.